Ways of viewing 3D images have been around since the early days of the stereogram, where you put two images side by side and looked at them through a pair of lenses. This gave you 3D vision and made it seem like the picture had depth. Then came movies that used those funky red-blue glasses and really made your eyes all buggy when you were done watching a 3D movie like that. Then came movies that used polarized lenses and were available in full color 3D. Hi, I'm Stephen Shane, AKA the 3D Professor, and this is the 3D Professor's Lab. Well, then TV makers decided they needed to get in on the 3D thing and started creating 3D TVs. 3D TVs came in two types, ones that used LCD shutter glasses and another technology that used polarized lenses with a shutter on the screen itself. Then there was the glasses free 3D TVs that were developed using two different technologies as well. One technology known as parallax barrier used an overlay that went in front of the screen. And when you stood at a certain point at a certain distance away, your left eye saw one set of pixels and your right eye saw another set of pixels, giving you a 3D view, sort of like the Nintendo 3DS. The second technology uses lenticular lenses to basically accomplish the same thing. The lenses would direct one set of pixels to the left eye and another set of pixels to the right eye these two technologies gave you stereo vision without the need for glasses. The drawback to these two technologies is that you really didn't get a sense that the image you were looking at was solid. Yes, it had depth, and with some 3D TVs, you had more than two points of view, so you could move your head from side to side and actually see around some images. The drawback to these two technologies is that you really didn't get a sense that the image you were looking at was solid. Yes, it had depth, and with some 3D TVs, you had more than two points of view. That gave you the ability to look around objects a little bit. Now, I used to sell 3D TVs that used eight images with lenticular lenses, and they were designed to give you the feeling of not only depth, but you could move your head side to side and get a little bit more than just static 3D images or video with some depth. You got a sense that this object or scene occupied some space and it really enhanced the 3D effect. Now, I've been involved as a backer on several Kickstarter campaigns in the past. Most have been successful, but there have been a few that never delivered. But that's a story for another time. I want to talk about a successful Kickstarter that blew me away when I finally opened the box. I kickstarted the Looking Glass in 2018 and got delivery in February of 2019. And it promptly went on a shelf in my garage. I recently pulled it out for an article I wrote in the Blast magazine, put out by CAD Learning 40 Technologies. Check it out in the link below. It's called the Looking Glass made by a company called Looking Glass Factory. It's a volumetric 3D display system. I don't call it a 3D TV because it's not a television. Well, it is, but it's not a flat display giving you the ability to see 3D. You're actually looking into a volume that's two inches thick at a three-dimensional object or scene. And in many ways, this looks more like a hologram than a 3D TV. Obi-Wan Kenobi, eat your heart out. I'm going to skip the bulk of the unboxing here. So let's get directly to setting things up and see how it works. But first, I have to get the satisfaction of peeling the film off the front of this giant block of lucite. <sighs> front of this panel will never be the same again. So the looking glass I kickstarted came with the Leap Motion hand gesture controller along with USB and HDMI cables that work perfectly with the looking glass, even though you can use your own HDMI cables if you have to. But these cables have one end that's 90 degrees and makes it a little more convenient. 
once the film is off, I'll plug in the HDMI cord and the USB cord into the back of the looking glass, then plug those into my computer. In this case, I'm using my laptop, which is an Intel Core i7 running an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1060 with six gigabytes of memory. This is more than enough to handle pretty much all of the real-time applications I've played on the looking glass so far. Once everything was plugged in, it was a matter of going to the Looking Glass website and downloading the drivers and appropriate software. Their website is easy to navigate and shows their holographic displays, including the two original, 8.9 inch and 15.6 inch, along with their 15.6 inch Pro unit that contains a built-in computer and secondary display, and their new 8K display. I would love to get my hands on one of those and take a look at it. I recommend taking a few minutes and just checking out their website to get a better idea of what this display can do. After going to the download section and downloading the Holoplay service and a few other applications, including the Looking Glass library and the 3D model importer that allows me to open models converted to OBJ files and view them in fabulous 3D. You can also download plugins for Unity and Unreal Engine, along with the holoplay.js that allows you to launch Looking Glass files from within your browser. The Media Depth Player lets you play 3D videos directly on the Looking Glass display. And let me tell you, it looks pretty amazing. There's also a couple of third-party tools they make links available for, like Voxatron, a real-time 3D game program that allows you to load virtual game cartridges or make your own game and distribute it. There's also a plugin for Blender that allows you to view objects in your scene on the Looking Glass display, but that's a separate download and is currently in a closed beta, but you can sign up through the Looking Glass website and try and get accepted into the program. Once everything is installed, the best way to see the effect of this display immediately is to run the Looking Glass library. With the Looking Glass library up and running, you can pick from a variety of different samples that have been uploaded by users from around the world, as well as Looking Glass's own developers. To view a Looking Glass app, scroll down until you find the application you want to run and click on it. If the app hasn't already been downloaded yet, you need to download it. Once it's downloaded, you can launch the app. You need to set the configuration so that the app displays on the second display in my case. Set the screen resolution to 2560 by 1600 and set the graphics quality to whatever will run on your particular system. With the graphics card I have in my laptop, I can run this app using the ultra quality setting. Then click play. After the app loads, you'll see it on the looking glass in 3D. What's happening behind the scenes is the application is creating a light field with 45 independent views and combining them in a way that sends each of those 45 views to a specific set of pixels. The optics built into the clear Lucite block take those pixels and display them within the volume of the block. It really looks absolutely amazing. The fact that this is displaying a fully 3D object that I can look around within this volume, I can't understate what that actually looks like. 2D television just doesn't do it justice, period. The one drawback from having 45 different views is that the overall image quality takes a pretty big hit, especially on the 8.9 inch 2K display. But the resulting three-dimensional view makes up for the lack of resolution providing a sense of depth that you cannot get on a traditional stereoscopic display. Let me tell you, if you can go see one of these displays, you will not be disappointed. So whether you go to a trade show like CES or can find a friend that has one, check it out. Thank you for watching the 3D Professor's Lab. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a comment. Don't forget to click like and subscribe to my channel. I'm Stephen Shane, the 3D Professor. 
it's time to go home.